Maybe you're just five seconds away from clearing the spiral abyss fully. Maybe you're 30 seconds or maybe you're already clearing it and you just want to do a little bit better. Either way, if you're not already doing these things and you start doing them, your time will improve. I mean, I can't make any promises, but you'll play better. And just a reminder that this video will be specifically tailored for this version of the abyss. So if you come to it at a later date and it does not help you with a future version, that's because it was not intended for it and you're kind of dumb. And I will not apologize for that because I will have made it very apparent which version this is for, Craig. Now, as with every Spiral Abyss, it is very important to look at the Abyssal Blessing and decide, can I take advantage of this? Does this actually work with characters I've built? It is usually tailored to benefit characters that are currently featured on the limited banners. I mean, that's usually how it goes. This time, it's kind of like they're trying to sell you a door, saying it will work as a life raft and save two people instead of being a door. It can work with physical Zhongli, but uh, that's that's not how you sell Zhongli to people. You sell them by saying mechanics don't exist anymore. And now I've just angered the one physical DPS Zhongli main out there, and you know what? I'm okay with that. Fight me, because you do no damage. But if you have characters that are built properly and are strong, it may be worth using those over characters that may be a little bit stronger but aren't well tailored towards the blessing. And this one particularly is centered around normal attack and damage, not normal attack. So that means much like with the Raiden Shogun Beto situation, Raiden Shogun will not actually proc this because she does not do normal attack damage. She does normal attacks that are doing burst damage. Now I will say this about this blessing, I don't think it's strong enough to really focus heavily on outside of floor 12 a bit, but more on that later. If you do feel like investing in it, some good units to consider are units like Diluc, Yoimiya, Child, Eula, Klee, Yanfei, Razor, Ningguang, and Noel. There are others, but they might not be quite as meta, even some of these aren't really meta, but they are very reliant on their auto attacks. Floor 11, the defense. This one is very easy, but if you're having trouble, it might be because maybe you're putting the monolith in too much danger. In the first half, the Ruined Sentinels aren't even going to target the monolith. They are 100% focused on you. Get far away from the monolith. They will not target it if you are not near it. You can even take your time killing them, because remember, this is not about the time limit. It's just about keeping the monolith above a certain health threshold. On the second half, there are some dangerous enemies, but they are very easy to manage. For one, there's only four small hilly churls. Take them out very quickly, then there's almost no danger to the actual monolith. There is an Electro Abyss Mage that could chunk the shit out of this thing, but let's be real, Electro Abyss Mage shields are basically made out of paper mache and shatter the moment you lightly blow on them. So just take out the Abyss Mage after you kill the small hilly churls, and then you just have to the Lala Churl to deal with, and the Lala Churl charges you right away, and then he just kind of lumbers around. Just don't aim him towards the monolith at any point, and you're pretty much good. It could be a little unreasonable to expect two large samurai and a mirror maiden to all group up conveniently for you because all three of these enemies like to move around a lot as they're fighting you. So just make sure you kill the two large samurai around the same time so one of them does not heal off the other one. Generally, I would recommend going for the mirror maiden first, especially if you're a melee character because remember the mirror maiden will not chase you, but the samurai will. So at least if you kill the mirror maiden first, the samurai might come along in within range to just take some collateral damage. The Thunder Manifestation. This boss is a little bit of a pain in the ass. It is very mobile, so if you use a character like Ayaka on it, you may use her burst and then it just might dash out of the way and then you've wasted basically her entire damage. This is a boss that will take some getting used to to fighting because you don't want to waste a high energy generating skill with a long cooldown just as it flies up in the air and then you whiff it and then you may be without a burst for a while and you just, you instantly have to restart. Eventually, after a while, you'll be used to fighting this boss and you'll learn when it's about to dash all over the place or when it's about to go up in the air and you'll be able to take better advantage of its small windows where it can take damage. Sadly, there's no real trick to fighting this boss. It's just one of those kind of like Dark Souls get good moments, so get good. And I, I guess if you want something kind of like a trick, you can bring a Geo Shielder like Zhongli and just sit through the little warning incoming game shit that this boss uses. That's a joke for you other Canadians out there who watched Reboot as a kid. Guess you also gotta be old for that? I'd be surprised if even one of you gets that joke. The entire first half of Floor 12 is resist- Ew. I've been speaking my whole life and I still don't quite have the hang of it. As I was saying, the whole first half is resistant to fizz damage, highly. While you can get rid of that with Superconduct and other skills, it is still more beneficial to run somebody else instead, unless it's really your only option. 
Now on the other half of floor 12, they want you to kill a Pyro Lector and then two Abyss Heralds right after each other with the same team. Now, this could be a little bit tricky for a lot of people, especially if you are still under the assumption that you need to beat the entire run of the Abyss with one team without retrying. No, if you're struggling, don't do that. Build a team specifically for the Lector, get three stars on that, then build a team for the Heralds, and then build a third team for the Megu Kenki if you need to. But it is easily doable to build a team for the two Heralds and the Megu Kenki. And then you only have to redo the first floor with a, a team all by itself. If you're struggling with the Primo Geo Vishap, you'll want to make sure that you bring a Shielder with you, preferably matching the Vishap's element, which I think is Pyro, unless he changes per day, or a Geo Shielder. Matching his element or a Geo Shield will make him take more damage when he does a Primordial Shower Attack, which will take a large chunk of his HP away. Both Geo and Pyro Shields are pretty easy to get your hands on with the help of Crystallize or just powerful shielders like Zhongli. But if you have to, you can resort to characters like Xinyan if you really want, T4 Yanfei, and of course, Toma. As for the two Abyss Heralds, they are a little bit annoying. Those two assholes like to flip all over the place so like you're some kind of circus recruiter and they're giving you the performance of a lifetime. Back yourself into a wall to at least limit how far they can go past you and it will keep them at least a little bit together, better than if you're fighting them out in the open. You can make this even better by fighting them with a cryo team as you should be, but if you don't have a cryo team that's good for the Megu Kenki and you don't want to build a team specifically just for floor three and do three runs of the Abyss potentially, just do anything that will at least kill Hydro Shields kind of well, be it like Shang Ling or a lot of electro damage, anything you can do that works, but cryo will be best. It's very important that when you start the final chamber of floor 12, when you get to the Ruin Guards that you stand perfectly still when you activate them. Both Ruin Guards will come to meet you in the center if you do this, because if you decide to ignore this and just run to one of them immediately as a melee character, the other one is going to open up with a range attack and it's going to take him a while to come over and join the other one. And then you'll just spend time damaging one by itself or sitting around waiting for them both to group up together. In either case, you're wasting time. When the Ruin Grader spawned, this isn't quite as important. The Ruin Graders actually have a charge that they are supposed to do at range, which will cause them to come to you very quickly. Now, they might overshoot the distance by a little bit, but it's not quite as big a deal. Ruin Graders have massive hitboxes, and it's pretty easy to AoE them down. I'm pretty sure by now, all of us have a PhD in fighting the Megu Kenki. They've been shoving this thing down our throats so routinely, it's basically like swallowing water. It so happens that that water is very unpleasant to drink and I'm a little bit sick of it. But if this is your first time getting this far in the Abyss, or maybe you just didn't fight the Megu Kinky before in the Abyss for whatever reason, keep this guy backed to a wall. He likes to jump backwards a lot. And by keeping him faced against the wall, you're going to make sure that he never jumps far, if anywhere at all which will improve your DPS massively, especially if you're a very stationary character or if you just dropped a Ben at all and that jerk just jumped right out of it. And lastly, just a generic tip for this floor 12 specifically. This floor 12 adds another bonus for normal attack characters. In this case, you are going to be lowering a base resistance that they start with, potentially into the negatives for some units. Now, characters like Ganyu or Xiao, for example, don't really do normal attacks, but you can weave them in quite easily without affecting their DPS too much. And with this added effect, you might actually increase their DPS. I make no guarantees. I'm not going to do the math, but it probably will help. However, you can use a fast attacking support like Zhongli to reduce the resistance very quickly, but there's an important thing to keep in mind about this buff. It does not refresh the duration. The moment you start reducing the resistance, the 20 second timer will start. After 20 seconds, you will have to do this all over again. So you can't just maintain it throughout the whole fight. You gotta do it once and then make the best out of it while you can. So choose whether or not you think you should focus on this. If your character already does this, like Child or Yoimiya, for example, like any of the normal attackers, it's just going to happen. But if you're playing a character like I said, Ganyu or Xiao, you're going to have to consider it as an option. This is likely going to be a recurring kind of video series I make every time the Spiral Abyss updates or maybe when we get a challenging event. I enjoy making videos like this. I enjoy sharing tips that help people progress and maybe learn something that they didn't think of or didn't know before. So if that sounds good to you, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff that you could... Eh.
all the stuff that the YouTube algorithm likes because it doesn't like me that much because my content is kind of all over the place and that's not going to change. So thank you for watching. Get them stars and I will see you in the next one. Bring it to the core.